Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, my dear students of honors, part three. How you folks are doing today? I will deliver my lecture on restoration and 18th century fiction, and the and the piece of fiction that I will be discussed on is Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe is written by Daniel Defoe. And let me first tell you about the life of Daniel Defoe. Daniel Defoe was born in the year 1660. He was the son of James Foe. Originally, he was named as Daniel Foe and he prefixed day he prefixed day with his name at the age of 40 and became Defo. That is, at the age of 40, he became Fo, Defo from Fo, that is from Daniel Fo, he became Daniel Defo. His father, his father was a tallow chandler. Tallow chandler in Bengali, we can say. The person Jelok Chorbir Bati Prostut Kore Abung Bikroy Kore Take Amra Tallow Chandler Buletaki. His father was a tallow chandler and later gave up that profession to become a butcher. And his father, James Ho, was a dissenter or a Puritan who are also known as non-conformist and his father was a supporter of the Cromwell's Commonwealth which ended in the year 1660 just before the birth of Daniel Defoe and as dissenter they, they were the persecuted minority in the society you know that with the, with the ascension of Charles II in the year 1660, the restoration period began in English literature. And Daniel therefore received his education at Morton's Academy at Stoke, New Newington. He received education to become a clergyman, but he died. He did not choose the profession of a clergyman and instead became a hosier or haver dasher and you know uh, in in hosier is a person who manufactures uh, uh, vest undergarments and haver dasher uh, in england is a profession is a business or the person who sells a small articles for sewing, dressmaking, and knitting, such as button, ribbon, and jeeps, are called Heiber Desher. That is, Heiber Desher is a person who, who sells small articles related to sewing or dressmaking. And at the age of 40, uh, as I have mentioned a bit earlier, uh, he became Daniel Defoe from Daniel Foe by prefixing aristocratic day with his name Foe and he became Defoe from Foe. He remained a dissenter throughout his life and he was uh, like a middle of the road man who hated extre extremism of all sorts. 
and in his lifetime Daniel Defoe was imprisoned several times and he wrote pamphlets very prolifically throughout his life and you know pamphlet is a small booklet or leaflet containing information or arguments about a single subject. In 1719 he published his most, most famous book Robinson Crusoe and Robinson Crusoe is one of the classics of English prose fiction. It is often considered as the first English novel in the in the proper sense of the word. But one glaring deficiency of Robinson Crusoe is that there is no love affair in it. Sexual love, which generally is a hallmark of all great novels, is absent from Robinson Crusoe. And some of the famous novels of Robinson Crusoe are Captain Sing Single Singleton, Moll Flanders, A Journal of Plague and Roxana. And by the time he died in 1731, he became the most prolific of English writers. And now, my dear Stevens, I will discuss about, about uh, the genre fiction. And you know, literary genre or literary forms uh, have some uh, have, have some um, ramifications or categories like poetry, drama, fiction, non-fiction, and criticism. And 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 uh, the uh, the area fiction covers romance, short story, and novel. That is romance short story and novel all three comes under the uh, broad category fiction and fiction fiction is fic fictitious narratives in prose sometimes it is based on facts but narrated with the color of imagination or hypothesis it is different from factual or real reports all novels and short stories fall under this genre or under this form and novel you know is a fictitious prose narrative of a certain length, length uh, 50,000 words and above a novel tells an imaginary story about recognizable characters and their actions in other words the people and events in traditional novels are imitation of real human society. Some of the common elements found in a conventional novel are a fictitious story, a plot structure, suspense or curiosity to know what happens next, credible character characters, setting in a place where the incidents of the story take place, setting in time that changes with the progress of the story, a point of view or the voice of the narrator longer than short stories and usually shorter than romances. An illusion of a realistic society, a world vision. A novel may be tragic or comic or it may be general or regional, even may be psychological or social. It, it may be pic picaresque or gothic or epistolary or a non-fiction novel or a novelette or a small piece of novel and now i will tell you i will tell you the story robinson crusoe in brief and uh, it will uh, take me two or three uh, classes to narrate the story and today I will uh, only tell you the beginning of the story, my dear Stevens. Robinson Crusoe was born in the year 1632 in the English city of New York. Very early in life, his head began to be filled with, with rambling thoughts. Uh, that is, uh, thoughts of different types. His father wanted him to study law, but he felt a strong urge 
to go to the sea. His father was strongly opposite to the idea of his son. His father was of the view that only those men should go abroad to seek an adventurous career who were either extremely poor or extremely rich. For a young man born to a middle station in life, it was a sheer folly to think of travelling to foreign countries. Crusoe did not listen to his uh, listen to his father, and he was a bit uh, an independent person. One day, having casually gone to Hull, he boarded a ship bound for London. It was on the first September. 1651 that he left home to go on a voyage against the explicit desire of his father and his mother he was at that time was only 20 years of age and and now we will see crusoe as a merchant trader and then as a slave the ship had hardly sailed out of the harbor when a strong wind began began to blow and the waves began to rise in a frightful manner. The wind soon grew into a furious storm as a consequence of which the ship was wrecked or uh, broken apart. However, Crusoe and others on board the ship were rescued just in time by a boat sent to them by another ship. Crusoe now landed upon the shore near Winterton in the company of others. From Winterton, they all walked to Yarmouth, where they were received with great kindness by the merchants, merchants and the ship owners. From there, Crusoe went towards to London by road. From London, he sailed to Guinea on the African coast in the company of an English sea captain who had become very intimate and friendly with him having bought certain goods in london at the advice of the this she captain Rousseau sold these goods in guinea a country in the africa african continent and made a profit which led him to decide to become a merchant operating between london and guinea however during this during his next very next voyage Rousseau's ship was chased by a Turkish vessel belonging to pirates. As a result of the battle which now took place between the crews of the two sh ships, Crusoe and all the men aboard his ship were captured by the pirates and taken to Moroccan port called Sali. From there, Crusoe's companions were taken to the Emperor's court as prisoners while Crusoe was kept by the captain of the Turkish ship as his personal slave. This was a most unfortunate occurrence in Crusoe's life because from merchant trader he had now become a miserable slave. And my dear students, uh, we have come to know that uh, Crusoe, uh, has, uh, uh, Crusoe uh, wanted uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to be a merchant trader um, became a trade became a slave rather not a trade became a slave and he became a slave of the Turkish uh, of the captain of the Turkish ship and in our next lecture we will discuss uh, the, the, the incidents that uh, that that is connected that are connected to Robinson Kusho uh, in the later uh, portion of his life and with this few words I would like to conclude my lecture for today. Thank you very much my dear students.